What's up, Make Pop Music? It's Austin here from Austin Hole Audio and Visual and Make Pop Music, and we are back with another video for you guys this week, and we get a lot of questions on the channel about room acoustics and monitoring situations because I know a lot of you, and myself included, are not in ideal rooms. Sometimes the budget's not fully there to have the most expensive, true, amazing monitors, and I know that sometimes we're just working with what we got. So you might be in a small bedroom like me. My room's 11 feet by 11 feet by 9 feet high. You might be in a living room that's got shit everywhere where you're just kind of making it work. So if you're in these situations, sometimes it can be hard to A, treat the room, and B, even if you treat the room, there's still gonna be issues like room modes and just weird kind of reflections that you can't really stop uh, just because you've got the space that you're working with. So I've been kind of looking for a solution to get around that and Sonarworks actually reached out to me and wanted me to try their software. So today I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about the Sonarworks software, talk about a giveaway that they got and then show you guys what it's doing, kind of how it's doing it and how I've been using it for my monitoring situation at my own studio and just how it's kind of helped me improve my mixes because I know what my room is lacking and what my monitors are lacking and I know where I need to be making up for lost ground for. So we're going to kind of do this in a format style. We're going to basically go over uh, what the plugin looks like, how the plugin works, how you calibrate your monitors if you're using the monitor version. And then we're going to talk about how to do the headphone version. And then I want to kind of talk about what was wrong with my monitors and my headphones and how I'm kind of using the plugin to help me see those issues and how it's kind of affected my mixes since I've been implementing the plugin. So this is not a paid review at all. They did not pay us, sponsor us, nothing. They simply sent it to us and said, hey, if you like it, show your viewers, show your audience. Maybe they could get some good use out of it. And Sonarworks is actually doing a full giveaway, which will kind of address at the end of the video and I'll tell you guys how you can enter because they've got some really really sick prizes not sponsored by us but I just figured hey it's a chance for you guys to win some free shit so why not let you know anyway let's go ahead and hop into my system so I can show you guys what the actual plugins and software looks like how to calibrate it and then we'll actually go into what it's doing on the back end and how it's helping me awesome now that we're actually in my computer let's go ahead and take a look at kind of what this is coming with so I'm going to show you first the version that I've got where you have the actual microphone to do the system measurements and everything like that. And then I'll also show you what the headphone version looks like. So when you get it, there's a couple things that you're gonna wanna do. The first thing is you're gonna wanna download all the software and then obviously you're going to want to measure your speaker. So I've got just some footage overlaying to kind of show you what you do. You basically will take this microphone that's got its own custom serial number, uh, every single microphone does and then you're just going to plug it in phantom power all of that stuff and then you're basically just going to hold it at ear level and walk around the room wherever it tells you so it takes like 15 minutes to set up once it's done it's done forever then you can just save your speaker profile so you just make sure that all this kind of stuff is on um, it's not going to let me do it because i don't have it plugged in because i'm actually capturing the audio and then once you hit next it'll evaluate your room take your measurements and then it'll give you your results once it gives you all of those kind of things that's where you can actually go into the actual system and then, whoa, I just said actual a lot. <laughs> That's where you can go into the system and there's a couple different options that you can do. You either have it on your desktop right here like I have where I've got it basically just routing out to my universal audio speakers and then you've also got in your DAW where you can actually pull it up on your master bus. And they basically work the same, so let's just go ahead and use the standalone version right now, um, just so I can show you guys how to load your impulses, what it's doing, how to load headphone impulses in, all of those kind of things. So. Let me just explain what's going on a little bit. Basically, when you walk around with this around your studio, it's gonna measure where you're having room modes, where your reflections are coming from, if there's any discrepancies between your left speaker and your right speaker, are there any timing issues? And then what it's gonna do is it's gonna put that into its software and it's actually going to figure out how to balance all the frequencies out, balance out where everything's hitting your ears. It's gonna kind of reduce the perception of some of those room modes that you have by just overcorrecting them on an EQ. So it's not gonna get rid of them in the actual room, but with the EQ that they're gonna going to use and with some of the techniques that they're going to use, it's going to kind of sound like they're not there. So they'll still be there. It's just kind of compensating for them. So that's why you kind of have to be careful with stuff like this is you don't want to rely on this as kind of like a fix all. Those issues are still there. This is kind of just like a bandaid over that issue until you can solve the issue at hand. So let's go ahead and look after I did all of mine, I'm using Focal Shape 65s. So I just saved it as that. Um, they've got all kinds of different stuff on here. So if you are using one and you know, you don't want to get your room measurements and stuff like that in, you can just go ahead and use one of theirs that they have. And so the cool thing about this is that they have a dry and a wet knob. And 
that's really, really nice for when you're getting to learn it because sometimes if you're super, super comfortable with your room and your monitors, after you take your system calibration and it fixes it, it just sounds completely different. So I wanted to kind of show you guys what my room is looking like. I am in a treated room. It's 11 feet by 11 feet by nine feet. And I am using pretty solid monitors, Focal Shape 65s. But you can see here that we still have a pretty gnarly issue, um, specifically in the low end and the low mids. So let's look at what the system actually measured. So we've got about a one dB boost here, probably around 50 hertz. Then we've got a big six dB kind of loss right here at 80 hertz, which is kind of an issue because that's really where your kick is gonna hit a lot of the time. That's where your bass is gonna start dipping down into. So low end down there could prove to be a pretty solid problem. And then we kind of have a really, really large spike here. That means that there's probably room modes here where it's just all of these reflections are kind of building up at my listening spot. And I mean, this is an issue. We've got seven or eight dB of boost right here, six dB of boost right here. So specifically like the 120 and the four, probably 350, 400 Hertz, all the way up to 500 Hertz is pretty problematic. Um, typically my room sounds way boxier than it actually is. And it's gonna sound kind of boomy and muffled. So this was really, really eye opening because I find myself cutting these areas in my vocals a lot. Like I'll cut 200, I'll cut 150, I'll cut 300 all the way up to 400 pretty aggressively in vocals just because to me they start to sound tubby or just kind of like overly muffled. And I'm realizing that maybe that's actually just mostly in my room. So for the past several mixes that I've been doing over uh, the past few weeks, I've definitely been going a little bit less aggressive. And I've noticed that as I'm referencing in the car and on headphones and kind of everywhere else, the vocals tend to be a little bit more full and not so bright and thin, which is really, really nice because I always thought that I was attacking the issue here, but I think I was just overcompensating. So we've got some issues there. Then we've got a couple little, you know, one or two dB dips. Um, these aren't anything too, too crazy. These aren't anything that I would super stress about, but this right here is a pretty gnarly issue. So I've got studio reference enabled and it's set to my speakers. Unfortunately, you won't kind of be able to hear what it's doing. Um, that's why it's really, really important that you just go download the trial that they've got and try it out for yourself. But I just wanted to show you guys what's actually happening and how it's helping me. So let's kind of bump this dry, wet knob up. You can see that everything's flattening out as we go up. So this is where we end up at. Um, these blue lines right here are my initial curves. Uh, this is the lighter blue is my right speaker and the darker blue is my left speaker. And then this purple line is afterwards. So let's just go ahead and let's take off the before. So you can kind of see how flat this is now. Now we've got between a half dB and a one dB boost at any given time in the low end. And then the top end is perfectly flat. So as I was getting used to that, this sounded kind of weird. It sounded really like almost scooped and a little bit hollow just because I was so used to that really, really robust low mids um, in my room and in my system. So for the first little while, I was having it, you know, anywhere between like 50 and 70% because I'm still getting a little bit of those. So it's, it's kind of like I had to train my ear again in my room. And, you know, especially on mixes where they're very bass heavy and they're very vocal heavy. So like the hip hop mixes I do, um, some of the more, you know, R&B mixes I do, it's really, really nice to have this and engage that so I can make sure that the 808s are actually popping, the kick is actually thumping, the vocals are actually full, but also still bright and, you know, shining. And with this, it's just a little bit easier for me to see where the issues are. That way I can attack those consciously. So that's really what it's doing when you take the microphone and you measure out your room. It gives you these and then, you know, you can just tell it how perfect you want it to be. So that's really, really nice. But if you're not on monitors or, you know, if you're, you don't really feel comfortable doing that, they do have this headphone calibration unit, which is really, really, really nice. So I use the Bear Dynamic DT770 Pro 80 ohms. And they've got all of these different profiles for AKGs, Audio Technicas, Beats, Bear Dynamics. Basically any headphone that you should be mixing on is probably in here. And then what you can do is you just select here. So I would just select, you know, the DT770-80. And then this is what they look like. So these headphones, of course, you're not getting any room issues because they're headphones, but the actual headphones themselves are going to have a little bit of discrepancies just based on the manufacturer. So these have, you know, kind of a 1 dB boost all the way from 60 to probably 115, 120 hertz. Then we've got quite a, an aggressive, you know, 4 to 5 dB dip right here around 200, um, which sometimes, you know, if you're mixing snares or you're mixing some of the, you know, really, really uh, kind of beater sounds and a kick drum, 
that's going to be an issue because that's that's where a lot of that attack is in those instruments and so if you've got this big dip and you're boosting your snare six dbs then when you get somewhere else it sounds really really tubby and kind of nasty this is going to be your issue right here we kind of flatten out towards the mids not too bad and then we've got some more aggressive dips right here around 2k and around like three and a half k so we've got like a three db dip here and like a six db dip here so that's not too great that means that um my speakers are going to be making vocals and you know stuff that's got a little bit more top end top, kind of high mids it's going to be mellowing that out for me so i'm not going to be getting a lot of those like really really piercing i like to call them radio frequencies it's like the really really nasally kind of honky frequencies in this section and then you can see that we start to have a pretty aggressive boost up here in the top end so this can give me issues if i'm paying attention to something like sibilance and it just sounds a little bit crazy or the vocal sounds super airy or cymbals just sound really really kind of overly bright could be because i'm getting almost a 6 db at any given time here so even when you're buying nice you know two three hundred dollar headphones they're still going to have their issues um and they're kind of manufactured that way i mean this is kind of the flavor of the headphone that i picked but if I'm looking for something a little bit more true, bam, you can just turn your 100% wet on or you can have it somewhere right in the middle. This is also really sick because they have this kind of output uh, threshold right here. So as it's doing these adjustments, of course, your gain is going to change based on kind of whatever it's doing to flatten out your system. This is just going to make sure you're not clipping on the way out. So this is how it looks in standalone and it basically looks the same in the plug-in version. The only thing with the plug-in version is that, of course, you put it last in your mix after your limiter, after kind of everything. And then you really just want to make sure that before you kind of print your mix, you just turn this off. That way it doesn't cause any artifacts or any kind of latency or anything like that. Um, and then that's really much, that's pretty much it. Um, you can even have a notify when rendering because it'll say it should bypass. But just in case it doesn't, I always just go ahead and do it myself. Um, you know, better safe than sorry. And that's pretty much the whole system. Like I said, you just take this. If you have some monitors in a room, measure it out, takes 10, 15 minutes, pop your profile in there and you're good to go. Then you can kind of see your issues and kind of tweak your issues. And then they've got stuff like bass boost and bass tilt where, you know, if you know that you're wanting some flavor around here, you've got that. They've got another feature over here, predefined target curves, and it kind of tells you. This is really, really beginner friendly. It tells you exactly what it's doing. So this is a movie theater sound target as recommended by the Society of Motion Picture and Television Engineers. So this is basically saying that like when you're mixing for a big screen, when you're mixing for something like Dolby, this is gonna kind of be what it looks like. So you're gonna get a big top end roll off. Um, and that's kind of what you want. So typically, you know, you would mix it flat. If you've got something like that, go ahead and engage it. If you're doing something like bass boost and bass tilt where you just want more bass or more top end or less bass or less top end, you've got that and then you've got all of these different calibration profiles that they've got on here. So it's really, really, really simple to use. You can definitely go check out their free trial for the headphones. You're not going to get this, of course. So if you are on monitors, I highly advise going to check it out. But before we actually flip to this outro, I did want to just go ahead and shout them out because they are doing a sick giveaway. We really have no affiliation with this giveaway whatsoever. We don't get anything out of it, but maybe you guys could. I know that you guys are always looking for some free shit. So, um, this is basically your chance to win FabFilter Pro L2, Echo Boy, Isotope Neutron 2, Soothe, Slate Digital VMR2, and you get Reference 4. So this is really, really sick. Basically, all you have to do is you just try Reference 4 out now, which you're probably going to want to do if you want to listen to it in your headphones anyway. Just try it, activate your trial, and then you literally just wait for the draw. That's all you have to do. You don't even have to submit anything. You don't have to, you know, join any crazy mailing lists or go through all of these forms and entries. So if you want to demo it, now's the time. You've got a chance to win like $1,200 in plugins. So it's super, super sick. I really want to say thank you to the SonarWorks team for sending this out and letting me try it. I know that a lot of you guys that are in more beginner friendly, budget friendly home studios are going to be able to kind of use this in your repertoire just to get a little bit more accurate picture. Like I said, don't let this be the end all be all. Don't kind of use this as a crutch. Instead, just use it as a tool. Use it as kind of a measurement system to see where your issues are, what you wanna do, and who knows, maybe you could get it, try it, use it, and then decide that you don't even wanna use how it's actually calibrating it. You just wanna use that for your own knowledge, kind of like how I was talking earlier. But there's really no reason to not go try the demo and at least try it out. Let them know we sent you, go join the giveaway. I mean, it's free shit, who doesn't love that? And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. As you can see, the software is super, super sick. You've got all of these different options to customize it. You've got the dry and the wet knob. You've got the knob to add a bass and treble boost and tilt. You've got the option to profile all these different kind of 
headphones and monitors. So there is just so many opportunities for you to get a little bit truer monitoring situation, even if you're not in an ideal room. So this is not an end all be all if you're not in a treated room and this is all you've got. This is not gonna cure every single problem you've got. But if you're in a room like me and you've got some nicer monitors and you know that there are probably still some issues as we saw in mine with like the low mids, stuff like that, it can at least warn you what's going on. Even if you don't wanna use this activated, you can kind of keep in mind, okay, well I know that I'm getting a huge boost around 200. So when I keep scooping 200 in my mixes, maybe I don't need to be taking out 8 dB, maybe I can only take out two or three dB because it's really my room just playing tricks on me. So try to use it like that. I personally like to use it between like 50 and 100% wet depending on the situation. But if I'm not using it, I'm still always keeping in mind kind of their analysis of my room and my monitors just to be using that for my referencing and my monitoring in the future. So if you decide that you love it and it's really, really helping you and you do wanna buy it, you can definitely go buy it for 299 and get the version I have where you get the microphone so you can calibrate your room, calibrate your monitors. You've got the headphone section so you can do all of that kind of stuff. So to me, it's a really, really solid investment. $300 is still much, much less than just shooting in the dark and aiming at room treatment. So I think that this kind of paired with room treatment and some solid monitors is a really, really, really good kind of entry to mid-level budget stage for monitoring and just referencing in general. So hopefully this helped you guys. Hopefully you want to go try it out. I'm personally really, really liking it. I was a little skeptical at first, but honestly, it's just proved its worth to me. And I think that it is super, super valuable for any studio to have. So definitely go check it out. Let us know what you think. Show them some love and let them know that we sent you. And until next time, we will see you. Much love, make pop music. Peace out. I'm exhausted and I don't know